Dear students, uh, in this session we will discuss about um, asynchronous uh, memories, that is uh, dynamic RAM memories. So, uh, uh, first let us discuss about like how the static RAMs are uh, different from dynamic memories, dynamic uh, RAM memories and uh, we will just compare static RAMs with uh, dynamic RAMs. So, static RAMs consists of circuits that are capable of retaining their state as long as the power is applied and these uh, memories are called volatile memory because uh, their contents are lost when the power is off or the power is uh, interrupted. So, access times of static RAMs are in the range of few nanoseconds and the cost is uh, usually high uh, because uh, the static RAMs consists of uh, four to five, six, four to uh, uh, six uh, transistors, uh, which takes much uh, space in the memory chip. So the cells uh, density, that means the total number of uh, memory cells in the square square area, it is very low uh, compared to dynamic RAM, and that's why the static RAMs are uh, costly. Uh, but uh, uh, the static RAM is uh, um, uh, fast uh, memory compared to dynamic RAM. Mm, uh, so this uh, static RAM uh, uses a completely uh, different technology. It uses a flip-flop uh, which holds each bit of memory either uh, 0 or 1. A flip-flop for memory cell takes 4 or uh, 6 transistors along with some uh, power supply connections but never has to be refreshed. So static RAM, uh, RAM uh, it doesn't have a feature called refreshing. Uh, this makes static RAM significantly faster than the dynamic RAM. So however, because it has more uh, parts, a static memory cell takes a lot more space on a chip than a dynamic memory cell. Uh, so that makes a static RAM a lot more uh, expensive. Dynamic RAM do not retain their state indefinitely. Uh, contents must be periodically refreshed. So the contents uh, which is in the capacitor, so that uh, it should be periodically refreshed for uh, read or write operation. Contents uh, may be refreshed while accessing them for uh, uh, reading. So dynamic RAM. Uh, is the most uh, common type of memory in use today. Inside a dynamic RAM, uh, each memory cell holds one bit of information and is made of uh, 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 one capacitor and uh, uh, one transistor. Uh, and these are extremely small transistors and capacitors so that uh, uh, millions of them can fit uh, on a single memory chip. So the cell density in the dynamic RAM is high. So more number of memory cells can be placed on the um, uh, memory chip. Static RAMs are fast but their cells require several transistors. Less expensive and higher density RAMs can be implemented with simpler cells. But these simpler cells do not retain their stat for a, state for a long period unless they are accessed frequently or refreshed for read or write operation. Memories that use such cells are called dynamic RAMs. Information is stored in a dynamic memory cell in the form of a charge on a capacitor, but this charge can be maintained for only tens of uh, milliseconds. Since the cell is required to store information for a much longer time, its content must be periodically refreshed. Uh, for read or write operation by restoring the capacity charge to its uh, full value because the capacitor is uh, ha having a feature of uh, uh, voltage leakage so after some time uh, it starts uh, discharging the um, uh, charge uh, the capacitors uh, ch start discharging the uh, uh, the uh, energy in the capacitor so what happens the uh, when the charge is zero that gives the logical value zero 
So this is a single transistor dynamic memory cell which is uh, consists of one transistor and one capacitor. Transistor is connected to bit line and this bit line is connected to one uh, word line. The transistor is uh, connected to a capacitor and capacitor is, uh, uh, is uh, connected to ground level. So here uh, in this single transistor dynamic memory cell, uh, when the transistor is turned on, uh, the appropriate voltage is applied to the bit line because uh, transistor is connected to directly to the bit line. Uh, when the um, when the high uh, when the voltage is applied, so then uh, applied to the uh, bit line. So if that voltage value, if it is above the threshold value in the capacitor, then that is a logical value one. If it is below the threshold value and if the charge in the capacitor is empty, so then that uh, uh, the bit line will be holding the value zero, the logical value zero. Um, after the transistor is turned off, the charge remains stored in the capacitor but not for a long time. So whenever the charge is there in the capacitor, we will be able to retain the state or will be able to retain the value in the bit line. The capacitor begins to discharge after uh, some time. This is because the transistor continues to conduct a tiny amount of current uh, after it is turned off. Hence, the information stored in the cell can be retrieved correctly only if it is read before the charge in the capacitor drops below some threshold value. During a read operation, the transistor in a selected cell is turned on. Uh, a sense amplifier connected to the bit line detects whether the charge stored in the capacitor is above or below threshold value. Based on the threshold um, above or below the threshold value, um, uh, we are going to retain the state. I means we are going to retain the value 1 or 0. If the charge is above the threshold, the sense amplifier drives the bit line to the full voltage representing logical value 0. It will apply high voltage on the logical, uh, sorry, bit line and uh, that which gives the value as uh, 1. Means the memory cell stores the value as 1. As a result, the capacitor is uh, recharged. So when there is a full voltage applied to the bit line, that time the capacitor also gets charged. If the sense amplifier detects that the charge in the capacitor is below the threshold value, it pulls the bit line to ground level and it represents logical value 0. That means the charge in the capacitor is empty. So thus reading the contents of a cell automatically refreshes its contents. Uh, once the capacitor is empty, then the CPU or the memory controller circuit it is going to um, uh, refresh or it is going to charge the uh, capacitor. Since the word line is common to all cells in a row, all cells in a, collect, a selected row are read and refreshed at the same time. So next we will discuss about the internal organization of 2M into 8 dynamic memory chip or we can refer it as uh, 16 megabit uh, dynamic memory chip. If you see the internal organization of the memory chip, uh, we can see uh, the memory cell are arranged in 4K into 4K array. That means uh, 1K is nothing but 1024 memory cell. So here uh, it is arranged in um, 4K into 4K. That means in a single row, there are 4096 memory cells which are arranged in 512 groups and each memory uh, cell uh, means uh, each group carries 8 bit of data and this memory cell uh, is going to be uh, identified or the memory cells are going to be selected by based on the uh, the row address which is decoded by the row decoder and uh, it, this particular uh, dynamic memory chip uh, it has uh, 21 um, bit 21 bit address and in that the high order bit that is 12 bits uh, which represents the row address and 9 bit which represents the column address and uh, uh, these address are uh, transferred to row address latch uh, and column address latch uh, respectively 
and it uses two special control signals that is row address drop and uh, column address drop to perform um, uh, to perform the um, read or write operations and this column address latch is connected to a column decoder and uh, the data lines 8 bit data lines are directly connected to the column decoder and this column decoder is uh, connected to the sense or write circuits to perform read or write operation these circuits are uh, used and this is connected to the directly connected to the uh, the cell array the memory cells and there are two special uh, lines used that is a chip select uh, to select the chip uh, if there are a multi chip in the memory system and another uh, signal is uh, another line is uh, read or write um, uh, to identify re uh, read or uh, write operation it is a 16 megabit uh, dynamic ram chip configured as 2m into 8 the cells are organized in the form of a 4K into 4K array of 1K is nothing but 1024 memory cells. The 4096 cells in each row are divided into 512 groups of 8 bit forming 512 bytes of data. Therefore, 12 address bits are needed to select a row and another 9 bits are needed to specify group of 8 bits in a selected row because column address uh, it requires 9 bit and but uh, the uh, uh, there are uh, uh, the, the 8 bit data lines which is connected to the uh, column address um, decoder in total 21 bit address is needed to access a byte in this memory so uh, this 21 bit it actually it is used to um, uh, access uh, a byte 8 bit uh, data in this memory the high order 12 bits and the low order 9 bits of the address constitute the row and column address of a byte respectively to address the number of pins needed for external connection the row and column address are multiplexed on uh, 12 pins so that we can reduce the number of lines by using a multiplexer during a read or write operation the row address is applied first it is loaded into the row address latch in uh, re uh, response to a signal pulse on an input control line called row address drop. So once the row address drop signal is activated, then the row address is uh, transferred to the row address latch. This causes a read operation to be initiated in which all the cells in the selected row are read and refreshed. Shortly after the row address is loaded, the column address is applied to the address pins and loaded into the column address latch under control of a second control line called column address drop. The information in this latch is decoded and appropriate group of 8 sensors uh, right circuit is selected. So this column address uh, is used to select the sensor uh, right circuit and this circuit is going to select the particular memory cell based on the row address and from that memory cell it is going to fetch the value and that value will be uh, uh, given to the data lines D0 to D7 that is the output value. For a write operation, the information on the D0 to D7 lines is uh, transferred to the selected circuits, then used to override the contents of the selected cells in the corresponding eight columns. We should not, uh, we should note that in uh, commercial DRAM chips, the RAS and CAS control signals are active, active uh, when um, it is low. The timing of the operation of the DRAM described above is controlled by the RAS and CAS signal because it is a asynchronous memory. It means it doesn't use, uh, does not use system clock or um, uh, clock cycle to uh, uh, perform a synchronization uh, to uh, to uh, use synchronization um, between. Uh, um, source and uh, destination devices. These signals are generated by a memory controller circuit external to the chip when the processor issues a read or a write command. During a read operation, the output data are transferred to the processor after a delay equivalent to the memory's uh, access time. 
Such memories are referred to as asynchronous dynamic RAMs. The memory controller is also responsible for refreshing the data stored in the memory chip. So because it is a dynamic RAM, so the periodic refreshing is required. So another important feature of uh, dynamic asynchronous dynamic RAM is uh, fast page mode. Suppose if we want to access the consecutive bytes in the selected row because here uh, uh, there are 12 uh, bits used to select the uh, row um, and uh, only 8 bit is used for the output values. So then, uh, so if we want, after uh, reading the 8 bit, if we want to uh, get, uh, if you want to fetch the another consecutive byte, again we, it has to reselect the rows. So instead of reselecting the rows, uh, add a latch at the output of the send circuits in each row. All the latches are loaded when the row is selected. Different column address can be applied to select and place different bytes on the data lines. So consecutive sequence of column address can be applied under the control of a signal column address drop without reselecting the row. So this allows a block of data to be transferred at, at a much faster rate than the random access. So this feature we call it as a fast page mode feature. So here block of data is nothing but a collection or group of byte the, that is referred as a block of data. So this block of uh, data transfer capability uh, is referred to as the fast page mode uh, feature. So this is uh, um, uh, this is a special feature in the uh, asynchronous uh, uh, dynamic RAM memory. Thank you.